How's it going, everyone? Today, we got a story time of a Karen who demands to fly the plane, and she actually breaks her way into the cockpit, and uh, yeah, it, it's a pretty crazy story. So sit back, relax, subscribe to the channel if you're new. Uh, smash the like button right now to claim your very own free nothing. I know, pretty great deal. And with that all being said, let's just jump right into it. So this all happened when the subscriber who submitted the story was, you know, waiting to board a plane. So uh, he'd been waiting for a little bit of time. And if you don't know, like in the airport, like I, it can definitely be in a lot of situations where it's like, it, it's not the most efficient place ever. Like there's been so many times where I've, you know, there's been delays and it's taken so long. But at the end of the day, it's not any individual's fault who's working there. Like most of the people working there are always going to try and do their best. And it's just a really large system that just overall probably doesn't have the best management. So while it's really frustrating to get a delay, it's really frustrating for all that stuff to happen. At the same time, like that stuff just happens, bro. Anyways, though, so uh, the subscriber was just sitting there with his mom. Subscriber's like 13 or so, and uh, he's just, you know, on his iPad, whatever, you know, watching the latest Connor Pugs uh, story time video, because uh, he's, you know, he's, he's, a, he's a genius 1000 IQ top G alpha male, so he watches the Connor Pugs YouTube channel. And uh, he notices that um, there's this Karen who's kind of pacing around. And this Karen does not look very happy. And, you know, she's got, you know, just to paint a picture of this Karen, she has the standard Karen cut. Um, she has kind of the, uh, kind of a bit of a, uh, I'm going to call the manager type attitude. Just, just kind of an aura of, I'm going to call the, uh, I'm going to call the manager. She somehow kind of have an, had an aura like uh, radiating off of her that made you think that she was going to call the manager on you. So yeah, uh, sure enough, right, uh, the, the Karen, though, um, you know, r uh, basically right after the subscriber noticing the Karen, the Karen goes up to the front desk. And so they're waiting in the area that you wait at uh, before you board the plane. And so there's a lot of people here. There's a lot of people waiting to board the plane. And the subscriber has noticed that a lot of planes are just not, it just says canceled, delayed, whatever, on the screen for a lot of other people's flights. However, it doesn't say that for his flight yet, but he's also kind of just aware. His mom's also been like, hey, buddy, like, uh, make sure your iPad doesn't run out of juice. Like, make sure you're plugged into one of the plugs because all I'm going to say is we might be here for a little bit longer than expected. Uh, granted, this was like a one-hour plane ride. Uh, they were going to Florida, and they lived really close. Or, But it was like too long to drive, but they lived close to fly. So it's not as if they're like, oh, wow, we're going to have to be delayed for many, many hours for a... I don't know, like a 14 hour long trip with 15 different stops. And this is just going to make it so bad uh, for the subscriber himself. It actually wasn't like too big of a deal because like, oh, I have to wait another hour or two. Like, that's not great. But also, I don't really care. I have a lot of content downloaded. Um, but maybe for other people, it was another stop along a much longer trip. Maybe people had stuff planned, right? It, I, I get it why people are upset. However, at the end of the day, it's just really disrespectful to take it out on, like, the basically the minimum wage workers who work there. Like, bro, they're not in charge of the plane. But I swear, Karen's, bro, they believe that the minimum wage workers, or practically minimum wage workers, are in charge of the flights and that they're secretly evil and want to, like, I, I, like want to, like, keep the Karen away from her destination, bro. Like, I swear, Karens might be some of the goofiest people on planet Earth, and especially in the airport, like, look, I think every single time I've been to an airport, I've seen at least one airport Karen. Like, airport, like, Karens are pretty common in fast food restaurants and convenience stores, walking in the park. Karens are very, you know, they're a very common breed. You see them around a lot, but I feel like the most common or the place that you'll find the highest density of Karens per square foot is the airport, it is the airport. The fact that I just used the Karens per square foot is a, is a form of measurement is very questionable, but anyways, right. So the subscriber notices as the Karen walks up to the person who's working the front desk, or kind of like the front desk at that place before you board the plane, and she's like, you know, I, I see that we haven't been, and, and the subscriber's close enough to hear what the Karen says. So the Karen's basically like, I see that, like, you know, the flight's still on time, but, you know, I don't believe you. And the person at the front desk, like, ma'am, like, I will say that it might, it's kind of looking like it will be delayed, uh, but I haven't got anything official yet. So uh, for the for the time being, we still believe that the flight's on time. Like we still believe that the flight's on schedule for the time being. However, 
I will say you're probably right. Just looking at everyone else, there's a chance that we won't be on time. So the Karen does not like this. And she's like, what? Like, I am going to see my grandson in Florida. Like, do you not want me to see my grandson? And obviously the worker's like, no, ma'am, like, of course not. I want this to go as smoothly as possible. Like, trust me, I have a lot of people upset at me. <laughs> I, I like, and she kind of just says that more or less, I'm not in control of this. I will do everything I can, but realize I don't fly the planes. And this has always been so frustrating when people in a lot of circumstances, not even just the airport, it's frustrating when people in all walks of life start to just blame people because, look, in sometimes situations in life, it just is. It is because of a larger system that is not one person's control. Sometimes there is someone to blame. Sometimes it's someone else. Sometimes it's you, right? But there are also situations where it's just a massive organization, a massive system with many people, and there's no one individual to blame. A good example is the airport. When a plane is delayed, maybe it's because of 50 people, maybe it's because of the weather, maybe it's because of someone else in a totally different state who like got one of the other planes delayed, but rarely is it the fault of the person working the front desk relaying the orders. You know the whole phrase, don't shoot the messenger, like I'm just the messenger bro? This is a great example of that. So yeah, um, sure enough, right? The subscriber listens as the Karen just keeps on berating the person behind the front desk. And yeah, it's always so frustrating when Karens, because I feel like it's a staple for Karens to go after people and blame them for something they have no control over and probably don't even want to be there, but have to be because they got to feed their family, dude. And that's always like the, that's always the most annoying. Like if a Karen was to actually go after someone who actually deserves it or was actually at fault, I probably still wouldn't be on the Karen side because of the way that Karens tend to go about it. But it's just so much worse when they go after someone who has literally no control. Yeah. So anyways, right, the Karen sits down. And as soon as the Karen sits down, uh, on the screen, you see it pops up saying delayed like by 45 minutes, which is actually not that terrible of a delay. I, for people who probably don't fly that much, that sounds really bad. And look, 45 minute delay is not good, especially if you have to like coordinate, uh, you know, getting a ride service or for some reason, it just really would be not great. However, I will say that 45 minutes is not a bad delay when it comes to delays. I've seen six hour delays before. But the Karen was acting, as soon as she sat down and looked up and saw on the board that it said 45-minute delay, she just started freaking out, right? She was like, oh my god, my grandson has to wait even longer now? And so the Karen sat down for probably all of six seconds and then proceeds to stand right back up and stomp her, like kind of storm up, stomping, whatever, all the way back up to the front desk. And uh, the subscriber watches as the person at the front desk is kind of just like, <sighs> kind of just like, really, bro? Like, I, like, I, like the, the person at the front desk already knew what's up. The person at the front desk already knew that they were about to be in for quite a situation. And uh, yeah, so the Karen gets back up there and she's like, I knew it. I knew that you were going to delay the flight, which first of all, what do you mean I knew you were going to delay the flight? What do you mean you delayed the flight? That's just a, such a crazy word, like phrase. Like, do you really think that the person behind the front desk has the power to delay flights? All they do is they get information and they put it on screen and they answer questions about the information that they were given, not the situation that they created. Huge difference. Yeah, so anyways, right, the Karen is having a big old fight with the person up there, and the person at the front desk is kind of just like, I, I don't know what I can do here. And the Karen eventually is like, I hope that you know that you destroyed a little boy's dreams of seeing his grandmother 45 minutes earlier. Like, such an exaggeration, and also... If your grandmother be acting like that, I I, I don't know, man. I, I feel like the, the kid is blessed by not seeing her for 45 more minutes. Maybe I'm going a little too far, but that's kind of just how I'm feeling. Anyways, though, so the subscriber sitting there for the next 45 minutes, and the Karen doesn't go up again, because I, 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 th I think the Karen, like, set her piece, you know what I mean? And thankfully, the flight was not delayed more. So eventually, they get into lines. And so it really depends on the airline, like, how you get into the plane. So for some airlines, 
what what happens is you buy a specific seat and for other airlines you don't buy a specific seat but you buy like a specific spot in line and then when you're going in there you choose the spot so kind of the, the spot in line to, helps determine where you'll sit um or other airlines you choose where you sit beforehand i've always liked just buying like where you're like you just buy your seat you know exactly where it's at um because i used to be on the other type when i was much younger we used to go and i forgot what it was but an airline that did it like that and it was always like kind of stressful because you had to get in line you had to kind of like find your way in the point of line and like you kind of had to push you didn't have to push your way in but it's a lot more stressful because you didn't know where you were sitting you know, I always would prefer to sit with my parents, but if we were like really far back in the line, sometimes it's really questionable if I could. Um, people were always very nice though and would always be like, oh no, like switch with me so you can sit with your son. So I've actually made it a point that whenever like I'm on an airplane, it's like I see that I actually did this last time I was on an airplane. I saw like a mother and daughter were not together or mother and son were not together. So I was like, hey, like switch with me. It doesn't matter. Oh yeah, good guy, Connor. Ooh, whatever. Look, I'm just saying, bro, like it's worth doing that. And I just respected people doing that for me. Sorry for the side tangent. Anyways, so for this airline, it's all reserved seats. But I think that Karen didn't totally know that. I mean, I think she went it. She got a seat, right? But the Karen was like, so they get into line and the Karen was like, excuse me, I am in the first class line. And like she pulls up her ticket and it said like group five. <laughs> That's not the first class line, bro. Like not only is it not the first class line because the first class line or whatever is probably group one or maybe even group two. I don't know. Uh, first of all, it doesn't even second of all, it doesn't even matter. Like you have your seat. I don't know if the Karen was totally aware of that, but, you know, you have your seat, dude. And uh, the only reason that this has ever mattered, like, now that I fly and I have, like, you, you choose your seat, the only thing that kind of matters is if you want the overhead bag space. If you get in really late, you might, it might get, you might have to put it not where your seat is at, and that's kind of annoying, so I totally get that. However, though, the Karen is, like, bickering with people that she's in the first class line, and the subscriber's watching this, and the Karen's, like, goes up to the front, like, desk person and is like, I'm in the first class line, and they're not listening to me. And she shows the person in the front desk, like, oh, this is my ticket. And the person in the front desk looks at it and says, oh, ma'am, you're in group five. Like, you're not, like, we haven't called you yet. We've called group one and group two. And the Karen's like, what? No, I'm in the first class line. Like, I wanted good seats, and I, I requested good seats. And she's like, well, group five's pretty good. And she's like, P -p 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 and, and obviously, uh, eventually the Karen is, is like, fine, whatever. But she is big mad right now. So the Karen must have also believed that she had not only first class line privilege, but also first class seats, which she did not. And uh, that is begins some of the real problems, as you'll see. So anyways, uh, the subscriber and his mom are in group five as well. So they happen to stand one person behind the Karen. So not exactly behind the Karen, but one person behind the Karen. Um, so group five is called and they all get up and they start walking in. And so they're walking into the line and they scan their stuff in. And uh, so they walk onto the plane. So on your ticket, it says what seat you have. The subscriber sitting next to his mom, um, they sit, I don't know, let's just say like uh, row 20, row 25. Um, so the first class is like one, row one to 10. And first class seats on a lot of planes are a lot bigger, a lot cushier. Sometimes it has its own little section, but since this is a, a shorter flight, it's just like more cushier seats or whatever. Dude, first class seats are always just so ridiculously expensive. Like, first of all, plane tickets are pricey. They're so expensive in the first place. But first class tickets are like five times the price of an already super expensive plane ticket. Uh, maybe, maybe if you got a ton of money and you're flying like 12 hours or overnight, I can kind of understand it if you super value your sleep and you have a ton of disposable income. But dude, if you're flying for 60 minutes, like just, 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 I don't know, fight it out, bro. I don't know. But yeah, so the Karen is stops in front of them because there's one person between them and the Karen and the Karen's like, I think one of these seats is my seat. Kind of pointing at the first class seats. So a flight attendant comes over because, you know, someone might be sitting in the Karen seat and says, oh, ma'am, can you show me your ticket? Shows the ticket. And she's like, oh, ma'am, you're actually in uh, your seat like F row 30 or seat 30 row F. I don't know. And the Karen's like, what? So, yeah, anyways, right. Uh, <laughs> let's just say that the care, the look on the Karen's face was 
of pure shock and horror. And what the Karen does next is absolutely insane. Real quick, comment Karen down below right now if you're watching on YouTube. And if you're watching on Spotify, comment it in like the feedback section. And if you're on YouTube, comment Karen as many times as you can. Well, don't do it. I don't want you to get banned or anything. So comment like five times. And I'll try and heart as many of those comments. On Spotify, you can only comment one, so don't feel too bad. I try and read those comments too. Uh, but also, if you're watching on YouTube, I, I also have a Spotify. Uh, it's in the pinned comment and the description. Please go follow me on there. And if you use Spotify, I'll listen to the listen to the stories on there as well. I'm trying to grow my presence on there. And uh, yeah, let's get back to the story as the Karen is about to go a little bit cuckoo crazy mode. So the Karen is just like in utter disbelief and shock that she is not in the first class seats, which like, ma'am, it's a 60 minute flight. It's not that deep. Like, I don't know how else to say it. It's simply not that deep. I feel like there's so many things in life where people make it so deep. Some things in life are that deep, but so many people act like so many things are so much more important, so much like life changing. And sometimes, man, deal with it get over it. This too shall pass. 30 minute flight or sorry, 60 minute flight on a non first class seat. Look, dude, you can do it. You can do it, ma'am. Like I have faith in you, figure it out, whatever. And also you don't have first class seats. You very clearly did not buy first class seats. But you know, the Karen was not hearing any of this. So to the, she goes to the flight and be like, no, 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 I've requested first class seats. I don't understand. And she's like, ma'am, I'm sorry. Like you ordered these seats. Like this is what it says on the tickets. And the Karen's like, it is obviously a glitch. I demand one of these seats pointing to like the first class seats. And the people sitting in the first class seats were like, uh, what? <laughs> like, okay, like, no, like, no. So this is where the Karen starts to go a little bit crazy. The Karen is starting to have a mental breakdown. And she's like, you will get and she, looking at the flight attendant and the subscriber remember is standing like one person behind her because there's one person like that is like a buffer but he hears the karen be like you will give me these seats or i will cause a problem and the flight attendant it starts to be like less like cordial and oh man like you put in the wrong seats like but these are your seats the flight the flight attendant's like no it's like you will sit like the flight attendant says look like you're gonna sit down in your seats or you're not gonna fly at all and the Karen and the flight attendant have this, like, staring contest with each other. And the Karen turns around and pushes past people. So pushes past the person that was kind of the buffer in between the Karen and the subscriber. Then pushes past the subscriber, pushes past the subscriber's mom, and pushes past another person until she gets to where the flight, like, where, like, the cockpit is. So the two pilots are kind of just chilling there, kind of just having a good time. And that's when they noticed a Karen pushing on in. And the Karen pushes in, pushes through, and gets on, like, the, you know, the megaphone loudspeaker type thing? It's like, this is your captain speaking. We have reached 10,000 feet, which is cruising altitude, which means you can now, you know, use onboard Wi-Fi or use your LTE, whatever, right? Um... So she, she attaches to that thing and she starts screaming, get me first class seats or this plane is going nowhere, which is like a pretty crazy thing to say and probably super illegal. Um, so pr pretty quickly after this, right, the subscriber, first of all, the subscriber is in absolute shock that the Karen is dumb enough to do this. Uh, look, here's the thing. What's what in what situation do they actually end up being like, oh, you know what? Yeah. She's right. Let's give her the first class seats. Literally no situation. Yeah, so <laughs> anyways, though, let's just say that the flight attendants are not taking this so well as they shouldn't. No one should take this well. First of all, no one should have to deal with this nonsense. I told like it, it's always satisfying when these like workers are just like snap on the Karens. I always worry that they get like fired or something because I'm I'm always on their side. But sometimes I, I understand it's like you can't do certain things to customers or whatever. But anyways, right, so uh, also the other thing is that this is like super illegal. Like you're not, airplanes are very, very strict with what you can and can't do. Um, I mean, you can't, I, I think it's like there's, you can't even like, you can't hover near the cockpit, right? You can't even like loiter near there. But to go into the cockpit, to break into the cockpit of the plane and basically take over the cockpit and then threaten very vaguely threatened that this plane is not going anywhere, which is a threat until I get first class seats. That's like super illegal on a billion fronts. 
So the two flight attendants go in there, kind of rip the Karen out of there and like bring her out. And the Karen's like, unhand me, unhand me. I better get first class seats or I'm suing you guys. And the flight attendants are like not responding to the Karen. They're talking between each other. And one of them kind of like barks up to another one being like, hey, go call security. Like we need like a code 4827 or something. I don't think that was the actual code, but said some kind of like code word or something. The Karen's like, what? What is that? I demand to know. So the flight attendant just looks at the Karen and almost with a little bit of a smirk, not, not an actual smirk, doesn't actually have like a full on smirk, but you know what? A little bit of a smirk is like, you're being kicked off the flight. I'm calling security. And the Karen at this point went from probably thinking that, you know what? Worst case scenario, I have to sit in my old seats. Best case scenario, I get first class seats to now thinking I might not even be able to get on this plane, which she's not able to get on this plane. The Karen's like, uh, you know, maybe, maybe I don't, you know what? I, I don't need the first class seats. Just let me go sit in my normal seat. It, kind of thinking like, oh, uh, let me, I actually kind of messed up here. Let me just get my normal seats again. It, it's almost like the whole like perspective thing where it's like, you know, a, a man, like a man, there's like a phrase, a saying, like a man wants a million things, but a sick man only wants one thing. And that one thing is to like feel good again. And the same phrase of like a uh, Karen, you know, Karen normally wants everything, first class seats, super quick flight. But when a Karen thinks she'll be kicked off a plane, the only thing she wants is her normal seats. Um, and uh, yeah, the flight attendants are not having it. They're just, they stop responding to the Karen. And the Karen's yelling at her, like, like, you, like, you must listen, like, you must respond to me, like, let me go, I paid for these seats, all blah, 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 right, all this kind of stuff, like, uh, like, I'm your employer, whatever, which, not true, uh, like, I'm paying your salary, well, uh, maybe, not really, though, like, uh, yeah, technically, you're part of the revenue stream, but you and, like, a billion other people, bro, so, uh, yeah, eventually, though, security get on the flight, so security get on the plane, and so they, they go up to the Karen and they have a little talk with the people, the flight attendants, whatever. And the flight attendants give the little rundown of what happened. And the, the security kind of gives like the Karen a, like an, hey, yo, what the freak, bro? Like kind of like a look of like, what? <laughs> like, really? Really? Um, but then the Karen is like yelling like, no, no, they're lying. It's fake. Like, let me go back to my seats. Let me go back to my seats. So then like the, the flight attendants kind of like holding the Karen back give the Karen over to the security, and the security starts dragging the Karen off the plane. The, the Karen's like, you'll be hearing from me. Like, I have people in powerful places. Cap, by the way. I, like, you will all lose your job. Your manager will know of this. And as the Karen's being dragged off the plane, you know when people clap when the plane lands successfully? People were clapping for the Karen being dragged off the plane. So anyways, Karen is dragged off the plane. There's probably about 30 minutes of just people of, like, Flight attendants probably writing up a report of what happened, of things is getting situated. And then eventually the captain's like, sorry for that disturbance. And that unexpected disturbance will be taking off shortly. People clap again. They get up in the sky and things are good. Uh, click on the video on screen right now to support the channel. It really does help out. And uh, peace.